Hey y'all, it's finally here. Our Shadow Warriors NFT collection is here and you can be a part of it right now. Brought to you by the Lightest Fear Network. Our native, our Joe Art native token is available right now for pre-sale. Grab the game right now, the top line of the description box. I got some dope visuals on the screen for you. So if you like gaming, if you like NFTs, and if you like to make money, this is definitely for you. Go to the top line of the description box. That's JoeTart.com. JoeTart.com. Tell them what God sent you. Peace. Man, it seems like independent women do the most complaining. When men do what they're supposed to do. Why every man got to be a yes dear Hey, come on, you guys. You are ignorant. I'm protesting. Are your dreams, son? Same dream. You deserve what you get. And we see what's going on in the NBA right now, and we like to go against the grain here on this show. So currently what's going on with Kyrie Irving, I mean, we could drop our perspective on it, but I would like to hear yours in regards to what he's currently going through. We see what he went through last year with that whole situation. We ain't even going to bring that up. And now we see what he's currently going through, referencing a movie that he spoke about being a part of his heritage when he went and researched the, his name and what it meant. He went and typed it into Amazon. This movie came up. He mm -hmm. felt a connection to it. He shared it. And now we're here with all this mess. He's being called an anti-Semite as well. What's your thought on that, being a part of the NBA, knowing that circle, knowing how that situation works and what they're doing to Kyrie Irving right now? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, Kyrie is too outspoken for how popular that he is. Um, that's the long and short of it. Uh, you can see with the whole uh, jab thing with the uh, vaccines, um, they attack Kyrie because he has a connection to the kids. Um, he was he's, he's this grandma ma thing. Uh, he did what Larry Johnson did. Um, Larry, what's the little character he plays, Uncle Drew or whatever? Yeah. He, these kids love uh, him in a different level. So anytime you have the, the masses that listen to you, um, that's going to be a dangerous thing. They only want to utilize that for what they want to utilize it for. If you notice, uh, basketball has become more political. And as long as you say a certain thing, we don't want you to shut up and dribble. But if you don't say a certain thing, you're going to have to shut up and dribble or they're going to take your money. Yeah. For sure. So uh, ultimately um, we see a lot of people, even Kanye West, you know, it's like when they speak up and uh, what I said was, I said, why don't they engage what Kanye West actually said? Mm -hmm. They're scared to kind of engage what he really said because it was truth to it. They keep saying he's crazy. He's that, he's that. So kind of tied it into the Kanye West situation as well. How do you feel about that? You know, people calling him anti-Semitic. Well, see, I'm not really. Usually, they put labels on things to cut the conversation off, so it's not surprising that they not dealing with the context of what he said, but they put a label out in front of it. But I'm not educated on what's anti-Semitic and what's not. But I, I just asked the question um, with the whole Kanye thing: Why won't they just debate him? Why won't they just talk to him about yeah. it and just have it in an open form instead of uh, silencing someone or taking away all their wealth to me you almost proven this point real talk absolutely now you also brought up brett Favre, and we've heard about it and then we haven't heard about it it mm -hmm. came and it went mm -hmm. fast as shit. i mean we've been yeah. focusing on kanye now now Kyrie, and everything else is going on to entertain us and distract us but the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is this man had a very illegal act going on where he embezzled millions and millions of dollars of money and gave it to somebody else and took it from somebody else our mm -hmm. people in particular what's your thoughts on that I mean, I know he's sitting back happy because he know that we don't like each other. So, uh, you know, you don't see, do you see the white media attacking Brett Favre like we, uh, most people are attacking Kanye? Nope. I mean, it's almost like they're dragging Kanye's peers out to all, like not stand next to him, get away from him, disavow him and call him, you know, crazy. They're just lining guys up to do it. They didn't do that to Brett Favre. And that's the thing with us. We just don't stick together. We spent a trillion, we spent a trillion dollars last year. You can't cancel Kanye of black folks stand behind him. If we buy his products alone, you can't cancel him. But the, the thing about it is that they, they make sure we cancel each other. Yeah. We cancel each other, you know, same way that the Asian stores, you know, they can, you know, treat our women crazy. I've seen it online where they, they treat our women crazy. They go right back and shop with them. As if black women can't do nails or we can't do our own nails. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's always seemed like we look at, we got to outsource our money in order to get better quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about 
your career in basketball a little bit. Let's do it. We all, we all seen, you know, you played with Mike. You know, how, how was that whole experience? I'm, I don't know if you had that question. I'm sure you have. How was that whole experience, not only on the court, but off the court, what people consider the best basketball player ever? Well, he was he was the best basketball player ever at one time. Um, but <laughs> he, he just held on a little bit past his prime. And uh, um, Michael Jordan has that rock star Michael Jackson effect, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, mm -hmm. You kind of can't tell him no. So if he wanted something done, if he wanted a trade to happen and he was told no, uh, then, you know, heads are going to roll. And, and everybody mm -hmm. around Michael Jordan knows that uh, people who are starting to see the last dance, they kind of see um, he's a regular everyday guy. I'm not I'm not here to bash him or nothing like that because he given me he gave me an opportunity. Um, but at the end of the day, my pick was supposed to be traded for Elton Brand. How you you were a kid coming into the NBA, coming mm -hmm. from came from South Carolina, right? Yes, sir. I, well, from... I, I left South Carolina. I grew up in. Uh, I was born in Charleston. I grew up in uh, Monk's Corner in UG, South Carolina, and then we went to uh, Michigan for a year, and then down to Brunswick. So you from the? Not that. Let me answer your question. Yeah. But so you from the same town as Charlemagne, pretty much? Yes, oh, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So now you came from very humble beginnings. I remember you coming into the NBA. You were a quiet brother. You weren't real brash. You weren't out, mm -hmm. out there. You know what I'm saying? You weren't the typical NBA player that we were accustomed to seeing at that time. Mm -hmm. What was your thoughts like when you were doing these interviews and you were beginning to see a narrative and it was stared in a different light? Because I'm sure coming from where you came from and then going to where you went as the first player to any NBA coming out of high school to be drafted first, that had to be a proud moment for you and your family. Mm -hmm. But then here on the other end, all the shit that you may have heard and dealt with. How did that affect you mentally? How did that make you trust the media? How, how did that kind of just overall affect your career at that time? Well, I learned early on that the media uh, plays off of narratives and victimhood uh, because uh, they knew about my story and they could have told it as one of victory uh, of a young man who persevered and uplifted and helped his whole family. Um, but what they did was they wanted me to tell a story about my father being in prison. Uh, and I said, my mother said no to that. Um, and I, I guess my YouTube page has been under attack, but, um, I know the young lady who, uh, she's not so young now, but it's a powerful young woman that you cannot tell no to. And once we didn't want to tell that story of the single black woman who raised up a son, um, and make that story more prevalent then some of the news stories started to become negative. Mm. And, and if you notice, a lot of NBA players, they're starting to tell their story. They catch us in sound bites. They never let you hear fully our complete thought. They chop up what we say to make it sound something totally different. Um, and it's, it's a sad thing because most celebrities are, most of these quote-unquote celebrities, because I don't believe in that, but most of these guys who persevered, through situations like mine, they have a lot that they can teach other people. Not because we're the smartest thing, but just because you have to be dedicated. You have to do the same thing over and over again. You can't be at the parties. You can't be with your homeboys. Sometimes the girl that you like gonna be with somebody else because you focused on a goal. And instead of uh, them listening to that on a, uh, from a celebrity, they would rather take us to go give out turkeys and be these symbols of, of hope instead of actually touching the people and telling them how you can do the same thing we did. 